You're on schedule. I'm on schedule. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to your website. Man, y- y- your brain is like on overload, Glenn. <laughs> oh, t- I don't know how, like, that's a lot of information. I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's really interesting when you get into Observe, it. Observe, analyze, conclude. Yeah, just just going through like uh, like a, a one year could keep me going on forever. But yeah, I'm, I was reading one article. It said um, P.G. Nietzsche's phonesi phonetics. You are only taught to understand part of the meaning of what you hear. Phariseeism is not a deed deterioration of the good man. A considerable part of it is rather an essential condition of being good. Frederick Nietzsche beyond good and evil. Soon you will need to overstand. Then, verse then. then what were you trying to explain? Yeah. Verse stand. Verse then. Verse then. You, verse then means you take what you have now overstood and go with it. Go towards something. Oh. Don't just sit on your hands. The what? The what? Jesuits use that term, verse stand. Oh. oh. Yeah. What? What? What do you think um, Nietzsche's whole position was? His job was. Nietzsche, Nietzsche. Nietzsche, Nietzsche. <laughs> I thought. It, I thought he was um like a almost like a dialectic he was doing like because before it was you know Christianity and he was like set up to basically tear down Christianity yeah, and all the values. Yeah. With it. He's basically the the calling of the Germans is to uh play both sides against the middle. Nietzsche, uh, Niet, is is the basic structure of his word, of his name. Mm-hmm. And Niet is no in Russian. You see, Niet, that means antis, people who are always against things. Or Nazi. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Nazi, anti, is tan. Saint, mm. they all have anti in there. Yeah. Now on your site, because I've I've been going over like uh, all the articles and like I'm trying I'm copying them and pasting them so I can print them in the future. But on one, it it has like it shows all the pictures, but on another one it'll go over the same articles. And it'll like it just, just shows the, the text. Yeah, it's called just, a simple version. Uh, uh, is it? You think it'd be better with uh, the pictures or? Well, pictures help explain things because pictures are worth a thousand words. Yeah. And it it always um, assists in uh, in comprehension. But some people have the basic knowledge and and they don't need any assistance. They just need the facts. Mm. Remember Joe Friday. Mm. Just the facts. Just the facts. <laughs> have you... um? Maybe you're not old enough to remember Joe Friday. Joe Friday? Yeah. What, what year was that? That was a show or... It was a show on TV. He was a, a detective. Always uh, kept telling everybody just the facts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just the facts. I remember hearing that. <laughs> yeah. Were you, uh, in all your years of doing this, like, were you able to, to get through to people and teach people, help them? Well, uh, let's just say that Although the site has been um, off since, uh, what is it, 76 or something, September or October 76, um, we're 
still getting uh, an average of uh, somewhere around 20, 25 people from every country of the world, even Antarctica, coming in and looking at us. And some days there will be uh, 150 people who go to that site. Some days there will be uh, five or six. And it's, it's interesting to watch that um, a small number of people around the world, no more than I expect to have the kind of brain that is needed to do this work, um, uh, come there. I mean, I I'm, have nothing original. The, the facts that I speak of are written in encyclopedias, dictionaries, secret society books, everything. The only difference that I have is I put them in order. Make a context. Those people who can follow that context, they they know. Yeah, I'm, I was reading... I wasn't like a surprise. Like I was reading... Actually, I, I always knew this, like... With the computer, you, you said something about the computer is not your friend. Every yeah. time you type in your password, they uh. The the only people you don't want to give your password to have it. Mm. They're called Microsoft. They're called Yahoo. They're called Netscape. Called Norton. Called uh, Hewlett Packard. All of those people, they can access your material uh, and your computer and everything that's in it. Bell Canada. Oh, yeah. you know. uh, so <laughs> the the people you're hiding your passwords. They know it already. Are are the the least likely to cause you harm. Yeah. Computer is just. Um, an extension of the telephone system. Mm -hmm. The telephone system basically did the same thing, but it needed the telephone company to hire people to listen in on conversations and, yep. and make notes and that kind of stuff. Whereas the computer comes in a format that is much easier for them to deal with. Yeah, I heard you in the article. You you, you put uh, and yeah, I knew this too. Like in the seventies, they came out. I think Zbigniew big Brzezinski talks about it yeah. in his book. He said in the seventies will be a new form of communication. And he said, I think it was Ar Arpa. Arpanet. Yeah, Arpanet. That's what it was. Arpanet is is the posting I did today or yesterday, I think. It was. Oh man, that's <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So it it. It gives you uh, an idea by following the links of the syllable ARPA mm. um, that it is a description of the war path. Think of the name war path, and in the middle of it, you have ARPA. Oh, so now on the war path. Oh, so and, you see that you can follow it through the Carpathian Mountains and. Oh. And everything they do to set up this war path, and it's run out of the basement of the Pentagon. They they basically say that they invented ARPANET as the first internet for the Pentagon, and then they extended it to universities and and big uh, suppliers to the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And finally, they opened it up to the public, and that's when the web came in and Internet. But that's all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the system of communications has been used underground by the gang from the Moho discontinuity 
for their own communications for thousands of years. They know how to make money. And they know that you don't announce the final product first. Yep. <laughs> you announce a a basically run down version. Yeah, keep it. And and that's exciting to people who've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and from then on you make money with each version. But they also learn things with each version. And they have to make adjustments. If they want to spy on people, mm-hmm. uh, there, there are certain things that would prevent them from doing it when they brought out the apple. So they, they basically kept the apple for themselves mm-hmm. and got Gates to announce the, the uh, Microsoft machine. PC mm-hmm. because they could put in software in that one that they could spy on better. And over time, every time they change the basic uh, program of the computer, it's sold to you on the idea that that's to help you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in fact, it's the opposite. Yeah, they use... to help them spy better on what you are saying. Now, when I say that, they don't care about uh, most people who are on the internet. Um, they keep track of everybody so they'll know who the important people are. Mm-hmm. But those people who they determine as a threat mm-hmm. to their uh, ability to control. They they basically track daily everything they put out, whether it be language on the telephone or faxes or Internet stuff. It all goes to a central computer. Yeah. And there's uh, there are people in the phone company who can sit at a desk and type your name and choose the among the names that come up among the individuals, the one they're looking for in what city, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And they can have a basic profile of any person in that way. So they they can then determine their next step in trying to prevent you from getting the message out. Yeah, because... Like, like I told you, the telephone company has decided Mm -hmm. that I'm a threat, so they arranged to have my uh, website name uh, canceled on some fraudulent uh, premise that I was somehow uh, spamming. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, when that didn't stop me, the basically went the next step to send in people here who stole my uh, software so that they could replicate my computer and make themselves into me so that they would know before I know anything that comes in on the Internet to me. (laughs) And they do the same thing on the telephone. And... uh, We get a bill here at the farm under the name of uh, a lady who spent two weeks here. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was her um, so-called brother, husband, cousin, uncle. Uh, Say that because my security people tell me their DNA is uh, uh, indicates they are the same family. But she pretended to be his girlfriend or wife or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was my uh, webmaster living upstairs. Uh, they, they basically stole 
for Bell Canada everything that they needed to replicate my computer. Another group came in from New York City, and they were here for a while on a on a seminar, and uh, they were visited uh, a couple of times by a lady from Montreal who works for Sympatico. Mm-hmm. She came here in a car that had a license plate on it from the government of Quebec. That's pretty obvious. Yeah. I guess they don't know that I lived in Montreal for 10 years, so I know what <laughs> these things look like. <laughs> oh, and, 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 you know, things disappeared, slides disappeared, uh, all kinds of things that I use in my presentation. Yeah, I, I hear that they try to, uh, like, cause, like, if you have a group, like, if, if anybody anywhere has a group, on anything, it will be infiltrated. Yeah, they they come in on the pretext they want to videotape you and give you the tapes. And uh, it's basically because they want to make a tape and keep it for themselves. They'll give you a copy, but they have an archive of all the things I've ever spoken about anywhere. And there's There's been, uh, you know, three or four or five of those types people. Um, one guy lives just around the corner. Uh, this summer he gave me a um, disc, a CD of uh, the videotape he had made of my first meeting. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, I, I don't I have no need to look at that, so I just put it away, and when the security people came, I gave it to them. And uh, a couple of months later, they brought it back, and, and they said, uh, this guy is uh, attempting to censor your information. If you look at uh, the part in which you described everything that was said in court by the RCMP mm-hmm. and members of parliament, policemen and members of parliament, um, he's purposely um, scratched the the image, played over, backed it up, whatever, so that all of the important information is not there. What this guy doesn't know is that, or doesn't remember, is that he had given me three tapes at the beginning, and I gave the security people two. Mm -hmm. So they have the information, and at one stage of the game, there's going to be a trial. There always is going to be a trial in these kinds of things, uh, especially after mass murder has been committed by people who participated in a conspiracy that can only be described as high treason therefore be punishable by the death penalty, even in a country like Canada that no longer has the death penalty. High treason is the exception. So if, uh, you know, a couple of million people happen to be killed um, as phase one in, in Canada as part of the bigger plan, where 100 million may have been killed in the U.S., yeah, I was told. going to be a trial. Uh, only the the venue needs to be decided, but the information is all being accumulated and put in safe uh, locations that would be um, kind of positioned uh, in the right places, not to be affected by water or fire kind of stuff. And, uh, hey. So, somebody like me, I, I'm probably not even a threat. You know, may, I guess I could be a threat because I'm a thinker, I think. But I can see, like, it, I can easily, if I even give my mind to somebody and let somebody know what's on my mind, I easily just single myself out. 
Yeah, but you got to remember there's uh, uh, six billion people on the planet, and mm-hmm. they plan to kill them all. Yeah. So what's the difference? You know, mm-hmm. you're discussing the time of your departure. Yeah. You know, uh, there's uh, there's no escape from these people except to talk them out of what they're doing. I get calls all the time uh, from people who say things like, you know, hey, you knew about New Orleans mm-hmm. before it happened. Uh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't see it that way. New Orleans came about after I made it public that it was going to come about. I'm a sculptor, and a sculptor deals with two things, the the final product and the shit he had to remove around that product. Yeah. The product was always there. It's the things he took away that let it shine. Mm. So I'm much more interested in the things I say are going to happen and don't happen. Yeah. For other people, that might mean that it was never intended to happen and I was wrong. For me, it basically says, you got them again and they had to change their schedule. Doesn't mean they won't happen. It just means the preferred date on which they wanted it to happen, they had to let it go by. And they don't like doing that. And they don't like doing that. They, that's they, my role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, because that's when that. I do that, it causes them to react. Mm-hmm. And I can only observe, analyze, and conclude mm-hmm. when people act. Mm-hmm. They're silent, don't do anything. Then I can't find out anything. But if they're coming after me, I got more ways of knowing about them than they have of knowing about me. I mean, I'm con- I'm on contract to creation, creation made creator. Yeah. So. So you see something bigger than all this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah, hey. It's it's a little game that's played. I I I remember you saying something that people who work for them, like in their system, if they know something, they. Uh, a threat, and they usually take them out. Sure, they're always the first yeah, it, that they get rid of. Was that the case with the Branch Davidians? Yeah, yeah. No doubt about it. It's also the case with uh, everybody who gets Alzheimer's, um, uh, Cassius Clay. Oh, yeah. Muhammad Ali. I seen they, something. Uh, oh, no. they always need to limit their ability to communicate, whether physically or mentally. Yeah, I seen because he. I've heard that the Nation of Islam basically manipulated him. He would, he would have. They would meet with the Ku Klux Klan regularly, and have agreements. There. Well, they're on the same team. It's, it's yeah. It's like the uh-huh. Israelis fighting Palestinians. I mean, they're both Semites. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, they're in the same family. Same blood. <laughs> but there's a benefit from war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and in war, like in chess, mm-hmm. your front line players are pawns. They're yeah. disposable. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing they do with disposable people mm-hmm. is they cut their hair. Join the army, join the police. Join anything uh, that is is uh, part of the war path mechanism, and they cut your hair. Yeah, I noticed too that a lot of people, like you know, even the high up, I guess the highest slaves, call them, but they don't have long hair. Like I don't no. see people. Why is that? Because hair is a sensor. Go back in time. Yeah, I'm saying they, but they know, like, the, at least the bigger plan, the bigger picture. Well, you know, not necessarily know everything. Yeah. yeah. And and they have to give an example, you know. People who use the 
Bible as a code manual, Mm -hmm. still go to church on Sunday. (laughs) Sit there with it on their lap. You know, because they have to show the other people that that's how you go ahead in life is by going to church. (laughs) You know, that reminds me, that reminds me. Uh, And uh, when I was uh, at Socrates, uh, before they killed him, before he um, died, yeah. he said, uh, and he was talking to one of the people that, uh, I guess it was a younger guy that was listening to him, he said, do me a favor to end this conversation. I want you to cut off all your hair. Cut your hair. Do yeah. it. <laughs> so, he's, uh, he's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, wow. Socrates, Plato, they just play ping pong. Yeah. Know? Yeah. They bat the ball back and forth. <laughs> The biggest game for a number 10 mm-hmm. is tennis. Oh. I'm telling you, <laughs> 10 is. <Yeah. laughs> you know? I just thought that was ingenious, though. Like, they have all these... It seems like they have different uh, ways of thinking. Like, but they, they, like they would bring people to different ways of thought and all these these techniques. I guess. Hitler. Look at Hitler. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was just the front. Yeah. The guy that was the Nazi was Hess. <laughs> and they met in jail. Hitler was homosexual, so they had a an affair. But uh, when when the shit hit the fan, Hess got the hell out of there, jumped in a plane. Where did he go? He went to Scotland because he knew he'd be safe there. And they put on a big show about him going to jail and all of that stuff. But you only saw the guy, you know, once a year or once every two years or something. Mm -hmm. His son got to go visit. But that would mean they would have to make arrangements to bring him back from where he was, put him in his cell, and make it look like he had been there all along. I thought they uh, basically made Hitler, like, genetically engineered, because... He was part of all these societies, and well, you know. there's there's always a possibility that they did that because they've made everybody. <laughs> You're either made uh, as a sixty-two percent syrup at the beginning of a process, or you end up being made by parents who were, and four generations later. Uh, you're still coming out of the same program box type of thing. You know? So it just, just depends on how strong the formula is. So it's like a purity type of thing. So if I'm more diluted, is it more of a chance of me breaking out of the program? Uh, I don't think so. I think the more diluted you are, the less information you have. What do you and, mean? And you need the information in order to analyze it and conclude. Oh. And and I think somebody who's who's right out of the the lab mm-hmm. uh if they let their hair grow uh and and circumvent that that structure they have in their neck and get uh to sense what is going on in the spine and bringing it all up and and rationalize it, um, they're they're much more likely to break out than mm. than somebody who only has par- partial information. Yeah, I'm looking at another guy you mentioned in your uh, post. His name is Lawrence of Arabia. I bought his book, The Seven Pillars of Wisdom. I think. Yep. So I I haven't read it yet, but uh, I have yet. Yeah. Well, Lawrence of Arabia basically was sent to um, divide the Arabian Peninsula Mm -hmm. into the countries they are today. Mm. He pretended he was a a friend of the Arabs and and fighting uh, bureaucratic wars against the French. Yeah who had more influence on the peninsula, especially in Syria. Uh, But his his job was to find out from the Arabs, just like Lewis and Clark did from the Nipersi, Indians of Montana. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and once he knew where everything was, 
where the family lines were and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. He was able to draw a map uh, that eventually became what we know today as as the Arabian Peninsula with all the countries mm-hmm. divided where they are. So he did like, I don't know if you ever seen the movie The Man Who Would Be King. Was it like that type of... Uh, I, I don't know if I saw... Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah, See it. I, I think I did, but I've seen so many. But <laughs> it's uh, with the... All come together. Yeah, it's with Sean Connery, and they they yeah. they show like openly the the mace. Actually, Sean Connery, I heard he was uh, actually knighted. Yeah. Too. He's like a, 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 a sir. I'm not sure. But, I don't know. Guy. But um, yeah. yeah, man. All I, those people that come from uh, Wales are are major candidates because Wales is the word they use in Jerusalem. Al M. Holla, yeah. <laughs> Turn the M upside down, yeah. and you have whale. Uh, so, uh, do you know anything about uh, Eton? Yeah. That just that name seems actually the Eton school. end times end times and on. Yeah, and end times and it's N because the uh, uh, second letter can become the first. Uh, an E and O together means a, a beginning. It's a diphthong. There were two letters that used to be joined together as typefaces. Mm. Uh, e and O, yeah. all you have to do is you always go back to the body. You put stuff in your mouth, where does it go first? Esophagus. Mm. So anytime you see a word with an E and O in it, you know you're at the beginning. Mm. And any time you see a word with uh, C-A in it, you know, you know you're at the penultimate. You're about to be at the end because that's where caca is. <laughs> and if you get pee-pee, you know you're at the end. You got thrown out because pee-pee urine is what brings out dead cells from the body. Mm. It's all a matter of understanding to the point where you overstand and then verstand. Uh, what did you mean when you said Mel Gibson knows the rules? Yeah, well, Mel Gibson is Geb's son. <laughs> Geb's son. Because I see, like, he makes these movies and to seem like he's like I guess on the side of people, or whatever. Because a lot this whole acting cast, these actors and actresses like Medi Cine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Medi is for the body. Mm-hmm. Cine is for the brain. Yeah, and they, they probably don't even can't even see the big picture. Well, they're they're bright. The, the, Two ways you control people within the system mm-hmm. is bribes and blackmail. So if uh, if they can't be bought, uh, they'll be caught. Uh, the man in the back seat of a car with a little boy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and then the blackmail will begin. You know? Oh man. So B and B, barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they roast us. Yeah. Oh, man, they just put two sides and got you in the middle, yeah. cornered. And that's what they do with God and Every, devil. Everybody <laughs> thinks everybody thinks their life is a secret. That the things that they did, mm-hmm. which basically they weren't doing, they were just being a robot responding to the programming <laughs> that had been put in them. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as they did it, then it becomes an activity that can be used for blackmail. You know, They mm-hmm. think everybody forgets things. These guys have got it all written down. Mm-hmm. They sent you out through life to do a job, 
and along the way they gather the evidence of what you do. And if you're not doing it, they send you somebody to direct you towards doing it mm. and maybe give you the resources to basically get on with it. But they keep records of everything, and, and you can be sure that at the end they can come in a court of law and, and sit somebody down who will know what you did when you were five years old, ten years old, twenty years old, forty years old, whatever. Oh yeah, I, I, if I was to get big, if I was somehow by some fluke, I just got big and something, and I got my names. No, I know there'll be people who are like, well, you know, you did this and, and yep. try to blackmail me, or whatever. But you know, I'm not like, I, 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 I doubt that would happen. But me, like. You like never, me. you never are certain. Yeah. Just uh, watch the Academy Awards this year, and you'll see a movie called Slumdog Millionaire. That's about a guy who lives in the slums in Bombay or some place like that in India, mm-hmm. and who wins the uh, "I Want to Be a Millionaire" contest. Those things are scams. Like, I, like the I laugh when I see, guy, and then it, it's like it's just the programming. They come in every day at my job. They come in every single day and buy lottery tickets and don't win. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you just. And that one guy came and he's like, oh well, that's my lunch money. I'm like, wow, you, you just gonna piss it away like it's. Oh, but they're not pissing it away. Yeah, it's going back. It's going to go into the system somehow. No, back into it's not that. They're benefiting from it. Everybody who buys a lottery ticket benefits from it. Why? Well, say that. They buy hope. <laughs> Everybody needs hope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the other way to buy hope is to go to church, and that's much more expensive. <laughs> well, me, the difference between me, I, 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 I if I'm going to have hope, man, at least I, I don't want it to be fake hope. Least, well, well it, it's it's not completely fake hope because in order for the lottery to function, every now and then they got to pick one at random. Yeah, but the person who they, who they pick are people who somehow are working for them in their system. That's All most of the time. Mm-hmm. But every now and then they have to pick one at random. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and since they made everybody anyways, they know when they, you're if die. somebody wins that they didn't want to win, they know how to steal it from them. Yeah. I mean, all, all it is is somebody will get $50 million. What does a, a person do with $50 million? They call I, a lawyer, yeah. and they hand the money over and <laughs> manage it. And the first thing you know, he lost it. Yeah, I seen I seen a thing long, a while ago. Some guy who won the lottery and just pissed it all away on drugs. He just yeah. spent it because he just could. It was like an addiction. He just couldn't stop himself. Well, I tell you one thing: if you ever win fifty million dollars, mm-hmm. the best thing you could ever do mm-hmm. is find as many people as you can mm-hmm. and give them a hundred thousand bucks. Not not organizations, just people. Yeah. And if you give a hundred thousand dollars to five hundred people, mm-hmm. you'll never have a problem in your life. Somebody will always be around to take care of you for a day or two. Oh. Give it away so they can't steal it from you. Yeah, that's so true. Oh boy. Me, I, the other thing I was thinking about doing, I always thought this, like, if I if I did win money, I would just spend it all and just, like, exposing this and and and, and, <laughs> and learn about this stuff and, and, and try to set up a... But I know it would probably just get infiltrated if I set up some type of... As, as soon as you set up an organization huh? and you sell a membership card, <laughs> you're finished. I uh, like, oh, it's a terrorist organization. <laughs> Finger me is that's why uh, they they own war, mm-hmm. they own poverty, mm-hmm. they own famine, they yeah. own disease, <laughs> they own uh, pestilence. Uh, so you know, 
Yeah, they 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 got they it. Get rid of the money quick. <laughs> I'll just spend it. Give it to everybody. I guess the best. I guess you're right. Make a big list. Wow. Uh. Say hey, if ever I need five bucks, eh? <laughs> Would you be there? <laughs> a hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, do you listen to um to music at all? Yeah. Yeah, I've, like I don't know, like how far back music is to, but you know, I, I, all I, classic music is is a part of the system. It's between two C's, mm-hmm. classic, and it's got Lassie in the middle, the bitch, Scottish dog, mm-hmm. called Lassie. So. What do you mean, like oh, classic, like like classical? Yeah, just read the word classic. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, I know, I knew that. Um, I read that somewhere that they have, you know, actually Mozart was a, a yeah. was a Op- mason and. <laughs> opera is is basically their method of transmitting information before Hollywood. Oh, oh, but it wasn't effective, was it? Absolutely effective for the time it was. In. Oh, okay. Well, I think and so was Shakespeare's time. Uh, yeah, yeah. When, yeah, when yeah. town criers and and bards mm. came into town and put on a show. Yeah, I I, I listen. Um, I, I personally, I I listen to classical sometimes, and I I listen to um. Hey, it's good music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I listen to um, you know. Sometimes I listen to some Beatles. I, I, I try to go back in the yeah. time and find, try to find some good music. Because the music now, like, like they have new music. Like one type of uh, genre I got in, caught into. It was a. Uh, it was like uh, techno, and I, I think like they try to like project types like messages in your mind with that. Well, the the, the music mm-hmm. is designed for a specific purpose. Yeah. And it works through your senses, like hair, mm-hmm. and and therefore it can send a message to your medulla, mm-hmm. and the medulla says, "Oh, that's good stuff. I, that's what I wanted him to have." <laughs> <laughs> and it pulls pulls on a rain that causes chemistry to make you feel good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Imagine mm-hmm. the benefit to the system of having a piggyback Neanderthal in every neck. When you think of a professional sports team, mm-hmm. these Neanderthalers, if you look at, at what they like to do, is gamble. They gambles, and they run. Reno and and Las Vegas and mm-hmm. and Monaco and all of those places throughout the world. So, if guys who like to gamble but don't like to lose mm-hmm. can control each player, all they need is to have the the key that turns on a certain feeling happen in the dressing room. And who in the dressing room would be the best guy to have on their side? It's the trainer. The hell with the coach. He comes in, gives his spiel for two minutes, and goes out. Mm -hmm. General manager just talks to them twice a year at Christmas or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the trainer... He can rig up the sound in the dressing room. He can rig up the smell in the dressing room. He can do certain individual things to certain players. All of these things could be the key that make them play hard or not play hard. You know, players always talk about, uh, we just didn't have it today. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you were turned off. Yeah, but as soon as you came into the dressing room, they turned you off. So you go out on the rink and you try to skate, and you just don't feel like. It. <laughs> so. 
With me, I always just thought it was just so. It, it just it's not logical just to have money, and the the whole the whole point of gambling is you're not you're not supposed to win. You, you're supposed to. You don't win. They always win. So what's the point of going there and just to spend all your money and and throw it away? On, and you're not even getting anything for it. You're getting a high, a high. The system says to that person, mm -hmm. you are unworthy to have this money. You should be giving it to me. I own the casino. You go play, and on every hand, a percentage comes to me. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're done, you'll have no money, and I'll have the money. <laughs> mm. Wow. That's all casinos are about. So if you're going to gamble, do it methodically. Buy hope three days at a time. Buy the numbers tickets. Put your six numbers down, and you have hope for three days. <laughs> and it only costs you two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like a, <laughs> like a little mind thing. Yeah. Twice a week, that means that in 52 weeks a year you spent, if you win nothing, you yeah. spent 100 bucks, 104 bucks. Uh. <laughs> okay. so, or, or if you do it twice a week, you spent 208 bucks. But I can guarantee you that if you do it... <laughs> Every two week, uh, twice uh, a week, that you will win five dollars here, ten dollars there, and in the end, if you spent two hundred bucks, that would be the most you would ever spend. Yeah. And you bought hope <laughs> for two hundred bucks. You bought hope. <laughs> it makes it makes you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With that music, I understand. Like, with uh, like. When I go, say I go, like I'm on my break at work, and like I see people who, like I go in the store, I go to pizza store or something, and you'll hear that mainstream, the same song over and over and over again, and you hear it in every place you go. I think like when they play those songs, like like they don't, like people don't go, okay, uh, you know, I like this song. They're told to like the song because yep. they told because they play it over and over again, and then you just like it because you hear it. It goes in your subconscious, and you just. And then they want you to buy a telephone so you can listen to it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I can't. I, I know people that might, like if I'm working with some guy, like when I work in the back, they always gotta have the radio on. With oh, I I can't hear it. It's unbearable. Like I really just don't want anything to play. Yeah. And I try not to. And if I am listening to something, I usually listen like um. Oh, I listen to something on my headphones, like um. I don't know, like a lecture or something like that. I try to because you know I try to make up for all the time I'm missing. Like I listen. Like I used to. And that's another thing. Like with Alan Watt, like he makes a lot of audio um uh, tra uh stuff for people. And I know since this guy was in the music business, the culture creation business. Like, you know, like, I would see how he would play music between his talks. Like, play a well, song. I, I, I used to enjoy quiet in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, but when Tom moved in, mm -hmm. he listens to sports. And he listens to sports so loud that you can hear it all over the house. Oh, I thought that was annoying at the beginning. Now I look at it more like it's impossible for them to tape what's going on in my house with all this noise going on. <laughs> if they can't they can't basically go through each tape and and put it through the system to remove the sports, you know. There's nothing that interesting here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I go outside, mm -hmm. well, that's the kind of peace and quiet that I want. I have a little woods. I have a little meadow. I have uh, a pond. 
And I have paths where you can walk on the property for 45 minutes to an hour without ever leaving the place. Mm. So, hey, I can go to the barn, smell shit, you know. (laughs) All of the things that you have in nature. The grass, when the grass is cut, Mm -hmm. those are the kinds of senses you that you want, that help you. And there are people from New York who said to me, the second day they were here, you know, we heard something here that we've never heard in our lives before. Mm-hmm. And I said, what's that? They said, silence. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, know, I know what you mean, because we have, because I live outside, I live in New York, but I live in the suburbs in Long Island, right? like an hour outside of New York, and you see, because those people, because they've been modified by the, the... How far are you from Rye? Rye. Rye, Long Island. Rye, I, what county is that in? I don't know. Well, uh, I could look it up. Is it uh, R-Y-E? That's where Barbara Bush comes from, Rye. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Well, you know, I do want to... Uh, I always wondered, because mm-hmm. Long Island uh, is in the path of a tsunami. And, and there's this uh, uh, book coming through the rye. So if you're close to rye, move. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, Long Island, like when, like I know the edge of it. At the end, like it sinks supposedly. Like uh, yeah. Like, the direction you have to be on the lookout for is the Atlantic going towards. Newfoundland, Mm -hmm. just off of Newfoundland, maybe 100 miles out into the ocean, is where the Titanic is. And it's the Titanic that has the device that will assist a tsunami to flood New York. Mm. And it will come in the direction of Long Island first before it hits Manhattan. Uh, well my whole family's like uh, uh they all got um like uh I think res uh regist uh no like they're all getting prepared to like move to Canada like they like 'cause if I have family up there yeah. and I think they're getting ready to move up there 'cause they, they see it's getting worse over here and yeah. They're all prepared to go and uh, well, just find out where the Canadian Shield is and <laughs> make sure you're on top of it, not beside it. <laughs> there are some places in Canada that are going to be as wet as New York, mm. especially Nova Scotia. It's going to be in Ottawa. Yeah, they want to go, but I don't know. Uh, Ottawa is the capital, and it's it's a uh, Nice little place. Uh, Generally speaking, you're looking at a million people within 50 miles. The the capital itself is probably 350 to 400,000 people. And it's surrounded by farmland. It's got more farmland in a capital than any capital in the world. Uh. So there's a lot of green spaces. That it, that is until all the Americans who manage to get out in time mm-hmm. come and take up the space. But that's why they put it there. That's why the city amalgamated all of the rural area in the region over the last 20 years to be ready to receive all these Americans who are going to come across the bridge at Cardinal. That's another thing too. I used to wonder, like, how okay, like you live in Canada, and I used to wonder, well, Alan, why why did he move to Canada? Why did he choose Canada? Because he knows. He knows. Why Why is the top scientist in the world <laughs> moving to Canada this summer? You know, Stephen Hawkins is moving to Waterloo. Uh. Coming because he knows. And he has to tell people exactly 
where the water will go. And, of course, Waterloo is not being called Waterloo for nothing. Mm -hmm. Loo in England means a toilet. That's where the the basic problem will center is on Waterloo. That's just north of Lake Erie in Ontario. Close to Lake Michigan. And you said this could happen any time from right now? Yeah. But it definitely has to happen by... um... 1998 was the starting point. 2058 is the end point. There always is a window of four years. So when they say 58, Mm -hmm. you cannot take a chance that it doesn't happen until 50 or 62 could happen uh, it could have happened from 1994 uh, mm-hmm. instead of 98 yeah. but it certainly has to happen after 2003 or 2002 and we're on that path now I mean all of it includes 9-11 Mm -hmm. it includes the tsunami that happened in the Indian Ocean it includes the hurricane in uh, New Orleans and we of course think only of us and we're not basically familiar with what is happening but there have been floods like you've never seen before in India. Yeah, I've heard there's been floods. There's been floods in in England, in in Germany, in Holland. So I watch European news rather than North American news because they get it earlier than we do. Yeah, by the time it gets here, it's totally old. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, I, I, I haven't watched the news in a while. I just fires and and uh, floods are all over Europe. All you have to do is take a a globe and look at all the big lakes and seas, the things they call seas, and and imagine them all linked together, all around the world. So that the oceans run in from both sides, Mediterranean, the Caspian Sea, all of the seas across the steppes of Russia. They're all going to be linked together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were movies, I think, that hint at this, too. Uh, I, I, I went to Hollywood videos, going to rent a movie. Uh, last night, seen a movie called Core. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's about, but the and the whole theme of the movie is that the the core something happened in the core, which the, the core planet's going to get Earth. destroyed, <laughs> or something. It's going to like blow up or something. I haven't. I might watch it, you know. But, uh, Nova, I, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, Nova. A Nova turns everything into mush, and it becomes. Quicksand, mountains collapse. But that that was that's a scary thought. I've heard you mention that you said picture that all the floor just melts and the mountains are melt. Yeah. <laughs> nothing nothing above sea water uh, except a little peak here and there that makes a little island if it happened to be tall enough, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but many of the mountains that are higher uh, will have collapsed, so where their peak is today will not be where their peaks will be tomorrow. Uh, well. uh, and it's it's basically not, you can't cross it. You can't uh, go on it with any normal transportation means. And, Probably uh, some hydrofoil or something like that can skim across the surface. 
but that's that's about it. Uh, then, of course, you have the opposite that has to happen. The Canadian Shield and its comparative structures in Asia and, and Greenland and that other areas, Alaska, we have to rise because you must always keep a balance between continental land above sea level and below sea level. So if more land goes below sea level, the others have to rise in order to give more land above sea level. So I'm I'm going to uh, feel underneath me something happening and when everything stops shaking, uh, I'll be on top of a pile of dirt that sits on top of the Canadian Shield that is uh, today a thousand feet below my feet. But those people, uh, picture they flood everything, the people that do survive, how are they even going to be able to like even eat food? Everything will be like, the whole idea is that you get rid of them all over time. This is a uh, multiple-stage project. So the northern hemisphere is three phases, and then the southern hemisphere is a fourth phase. And at the end of the four phases, the northern hemisphere's phases have to occur before 2062. The marker is Halley's Comet's return, 2062. It comes by every 75 years. And then there will be a 1,000 years for the southern hemisphere to have survived. Mm -hmm. But at the end of a 1,000 years, it too goes. So by uh, hello, I'm using the phone. Yeah, by 2162, everything on the planet is supposed to be kaput, with the exception of the Amish. Got that? Yeah. Yeah, they, they'll till the uh, they will till the soil to make sure the weeds don't grow everywhere, and they'll be killed off. And, the and at the end, that. they will die as well. But of course, in that area of time that comes after everybody's gone from the planet, a uh, few thousand years after, but three thousand years later, you have the problem of the second sun. Oh, Alder, I mean. Yeah. I, I want to ask you. Um, with uh, I'm looking at your website right now. It says Alpha and Omega, and Noah's Ark and SS Atlantis too. Noah's Ark. When they said Noah's Ark, they meant an arky, right? Like Noah's. They meant Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica is the ark that supports the genetic engineering project. Mm. And if you look at the story of Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. Noah's Ark is not about putting two animals of each oh, yeah. kind. It's about putting in genetic material from each species. Only that way could you fit it in something of the size they describe. But it's done on Antarctica, and it's taken below ground. And then it gets flooded in Antarctica, not by water per se, but by frozen water. Yeah. Ice. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's... 
as I told you before, this is a normal thing for the planet mm -hmm. to um, get colder during some periods in its history. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Because of the shape of the orbit changing from circular to egg shape. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, the, the, the whole thing with global warming, like, it's normal, like, the Earth does go through periods of cooling and goes through periods of warming. Yeah, if if Alder Amin, for example,'s mm -hmm. orbit is coming close mm -hmm. to this solar system, mm -hmm. it will get warmer. Yeah. <laughs> if its uh, orbit goes farther away from this solar system, mm -hmm. it gets cooler. Mm. And yet, there could be some other bodies in our universe close to our solar system that have an orbit that come by like uh, a comet comes by Earth uh, that basically pulls on the orbit of planets and make them egg-shaped when it's in the neighborhood that would cool the planet because it would be further away from the sun than it normally is when it just goes around in a circle. When it goes to the lump in the egg, it's further away, and you change the average weather mean temperature. Uh, are you aware, like, are there any other planets uh, that are... Uh that are habitable? For, um... There are so many planets in the universe mm -hmm. that it is unimaginable that some of them do not carry uh, the material for life mm -hmm. and that at least one or two must carry life that is intelligent. At least to our level, or more. Oh. Having said that, mm -hmm. any of those possibilities are so far away from us mm -hmm. that it is highly unlikely that they would ever come here. Um, we are more likely over time to go there uh, to conquer it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Then they are to come here. And and number two, if any life was intelligent enough to come here and they saw the mess we're in, <laughs> they'd get the hell out of here quickly. I think if any if any alien or whatever came here, it would probably, they'd probably kill it right away because. It would be like, hey, you're you're all under my control. This, this is a cancer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the everybody was brainwashed under my control. And, yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I still have yet to get that book. Um, the, I, the Chronicles of Narnia. You told me. Narnia. Narnia. Yeah, I I remember watching it when I was younger. I, I remember bits and pieces. I think about it like. Yeah. Uh, so, you yeah. can go to a bookstore and buy a box, and it has the seven volumes in it, mm -hmm. and it's um, I think it was somewhere around fifty bucks or something. Yeah, I I, I want to get all the mythologies. Like I, I um I want to get uh, Homer and the Iliad and those type of. Yeah. I, I want. I've been. I always, I always was interested in them when I was younger. All the, the Greek mythologies. Yeah, it's it's all allegory. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. allegory of what was before the Ice Age or allegory of what happened after the Ice Age. Uh, and there's different ways, I guess, of interpreting it, too, because I, uh, I don't know if you've ever uh, researched uh, Carl Jung. You ever heard of him? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, what do you think about his work? And He's in on it. Oh, yeah. He he was amazing. He's a car. And, huh? He's a car. He's a vehicle. Yeah. Carl. Carl, Carl vehicle. yeah. And, and, you know, the R in his last name. Oh, he was he was a Mason. He was a, you could see by his writing. He was a Mason. I think his 
father was like the head mason yeah. over there. But yeah, he. It seemed like he was going against uh, Sigmund Freud. Because Sigmund Freud tried to put everything down to the head. And, Bob you know, Bad Cop. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was a dialectic. Yeah, they all play that game. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, and, but I heard Freud wasn't even, he didn't even have a degree. He was just, he was like a big cokehead, and he was really projecting himself yeah. onto other people. But I, I, I he, think. He's sitting in a place where all the patents come. He's just like Einstein, right? Yeah. yeah. But but I don't know, Carl Young, he, he did have a point, though. You know, when he talked they about... They all have points. Yeah. They don't have truth. <laughs> they don't share truth. That's why they make secret societies. Really? You don't think... I think some of what he was saying was true. Like, with Carl Young, like, he would go into the unconscious mind and... He, but then he would put in a, so much BS in it. But there was a there was some truth in there. Like there's bits of truth scattered in all these books. The it's all scattered. Is, what? Hmm? what they have is like a why. Mm -hmm. You start at the base, mm -hmm. and the truth they give you is what is commonly known. Then they either this. And then they that. get to a fork, mm -hmm. and and truth goes in one direction. And they turn you in the other direction mm. at the fork. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> mm. So what What would you, have you ever like researched into the unconscious mind and looked into it? Because I thought it was interesting like how, you know, they say. Your, 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 your information is recorded in your DNA. Yeah. When you talk about mind, you're only speaking about a path mm -hmm. to the information in your DNA. Mm -hmm. My DNA has been replicated many, many times. I can't prove it to you, but I can prove it to me. Mm -hmm. Since I'm the one who's living it, I can see it. You don't bring knowledge from one life to the other that is conscious, but you bring it unconsciously in your DNA. Mm. And if you work at it after you're 40 and you have all of the facts, then you have a possibility of uncovering that knowledge. And, like, how... I'm a little curious. How does that, like... You said you... How did you, like, it get like comes to you, like, like the DNA, like, that you were talking about, goes down into the... Uh, because basalt. you need to marry your reasoning with your intuition. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, like, with the DNA, like... You said it comes down into the basalt area, with, and, and then it comes. You said it comes out like when you like when you see like a volcano is like is like vines and like so so like when you're eating something, you're like eating like a fruit or something. You, are you eating like a DNA? The DNA is what they call God is everywhere. There is there is in every cell. DNA, but some cells are more direct than others. They're called stem cells, mm -hmm. and they are found mostly in the marrow of your bones. And sometimes it takes the breaking of a bone to cause a new enlightening to occur. It's like marrow running wild all through your body after you broke a bone. Uh, so, yeah, but you and said... your hair mm -hmm. is a sensor that is out there 
with apparently nothing communicating with it. But the fact of the matter is, it is being communicated to, but it's not being recognized. Hello, Hello. I'll be. Yeah, I'll be. T- I'm sorry. I'll be ten minutes. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's it's basically like a radio ten signal minutes. is always around you in the air, but unless you tune in. Mm-hmm. You don't get the station. It's time for you to go now. Yeah, <laughs> you can see that. Bye for now. All right, all right, good. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Bye.